Hey there, I'm Anthony Romano and this video is on hacking cheat meals. So basically, the purpose of this video is whether you're a keto dieter, whether you're a calorie dieter, whatever it is that you like doing, you need to have some low sugar options because the effects of sugar in junk foods or cheat meals is going to mess you up. So regardless of what your goal is, you always want to have these low sugar snacks because they're going to make you less likely to store fat in the long run of whatever the hell it is you're doing. So the other night I was, you know, in my kitchen, just freedom of thought. And uh, I had some pretty good ideas that I explained about how to actually integrate this and make it useful. So hacking cheat meals is something you absolutely need to do. And I'm going to explain it in this video. And also while we're here, uh, disclaimer, I took a little break during the quarantine, you know, from videos and I'm all right. Nobody, some people are asking, everything's totally going smooth. I've just been working a lot with my clients lately. My volume has exploded during the quarantine. And also we're still doing the live stream sooner or later for the thousand subscriber, you know, uh, group coaching session. Okay. We also have the keto way guide dropping and some shirts, keto bodybuilding shirts dropping. So those should be up as well. Check the website. Let's get into the video. that the snacks I'm eating are some of these delicious keto cupcakes or muffins. Are they muffins? Do they need icing to be cupcakes? Anyways, they're amazing. Uh, these were actually based off a recipe, a cake recipe I came up with. And then my mom combined it with another recipe she had. And basically she just made it 10 times better than I do because that's, that's what moms do with recipes and other miscellaneous tasks. So hope you had a nice mother's day by the way. But um, that's just one thing. So my mom basically, you know, came up with this recipe uh, and just to, I, I gave a, a centimeter and she turned it into a amazing, like literally probably one of my favorite dessert recipes of all time. So thanks, mom. <laughs> and as far as what you guys can do is make this cupcake recipe and basically it's so low calorie, it's so low insulin, and that's what the purpose of this video is about low insulin snacks, okay? And I don't mean that from the sense of like, you know, uh, like like there are substitutes for real desserts or something, like that, or something like that. These are really good snacks, like they're amazing desserts. And when it gets to a point where even if you're maintaining or doing some sort of aggressive bulking diet, whatever it may be, switching out the high fructose corn syrup, high processed canola oil, vegetable oil, hydrogenated mess of a cupcake that you get from most places for something like that, which is delicious by anybody's standards, is a fantastic strategy you can use to stay lean year round. Basically, yeah, oh my God, I was gonna say have your cake and eat it too, but that's exactly what you can do. So have your cupcake and eat it too. And that's the purpose of why I'm going to explain in this video, the, you know, idea behind these low sugar, low insulin snacks. Okay. Regardless of what diet you're doing and sooner or later, I guess I'll have the recipe out for this bad boy as well. Hey, what I actually will do sooner or later is I'll probably, you know, invest in a continuous blood glucose monitor and I'll show you guys that basically with a lot of these snacks, the blood sugar rise you're gonna get out of this is way lower, which I mean, it's obvious already because the snacks are very low carb, but in general, you know, it, having a lower blood sugar response is always going to lead to less fat gain, okay? Even if your calories are in check, and that's another reason why people can overeat calorie wise on keto, but still stay in a low body fat because they're not spiking their insulin, which is what, not necessarily all carbs will do, but most carbs will create a giant blood sugar rise and that will raise your insulin, which will cause fat storage if you're not metabolically healthy in the first place. Or if in general, you don't use that carbohydrate and insulin the way your body intends to, which is for a productive building purpose. So plenty of that is explained in my other videos. And I'd actually believe that that 
argument I just laid out there is very well explained in my free keto way guide. So get that, even if you're not, if, even if you're turned off by the terminology of a keto protein guide, it's a whey protein guide for anybody. Um, just because nobody's broken down whey protein that deeply, but it's the most popular supplement in the world. <laughs> so that will explain much more the insulin idea and you know managing insulin spikes from foods that are much more prevalent to jack up your sugar and insulin. Whey protein is just gonna jack up the insulin, but you get the point, okay? Oh man, these things are freaking amazing, man. Honestly, like, it's not even just because I'm, you know, keto guy that I, I'm always having keto recipes. I mean, of course I'm doubling down on that so I can make great content for you guys, but this is a recipe that I would enjoy no matter what diet I was doing. And of course, if you're somebody who's addicted to MSG and high fructose corn syrup and all those other ingredients I was roasting a moment ago, obviously your palate is not gonna be as mature, but it's not as if you need a mature palate to enjoy this, it is amazing. And these things are just baking at its finest, okay? So realistically, if you have the choice to go lower in sugar, you should take it. That doesn't mean that, you know, you should not live your life and enjoy nice snacks and desserts. But it's just that there's a time and place. And as far as processed vegetable oils go and high fructose corn syrup, they really shouldn't be a part of anybody's diet. They're crap. They're going to mess with your brain and make you only be able to receive a excitatory response from those ingredients. And in fact, it can actually mess with other parts of your life too. It can make it so that other activities are not as exciting for you and other foods are not as fulfilling to you. So give it a few days of quitting those foods, right? Might be hard for some of you. And you will experience way more taste from real food, okay? Which is what a lot of these ingredients are, well, a lot of these recipes are composed of. So it resets your palate and helps it mature a bit. But I'm pretty sure that even if I gave this to somebody who is, you know, having high fructose corn syrup sweetened cupcakes all day, they would still find it delicious. It just wouldn't hit the spot right away because their brain is unable to experience that level of satisfaction without MSG, without aspartame or other excitatory neurotrans or neurotoxins, okay? So that's basically the gist of this video. But I'm just gonna eat this, okay? And I even have some almond milk here which it's the unsweetened kind, okay, in, in theme here, which again, it doesn't mean that I'm, a lot of people like almond milk, okay, it's a substitute for lactose intolerant people or whatever your scenario may be. I just do it because in the peak of cutting season, which is right now, as far as the bodybuilding goals, goals go, I'm, I eat ketogenically even more so. <laughs> and I just have an extra emphasis on strict keto and this is where almond milk and some nice cupcakes, and if it was the daytime, I would have thrown in some coffee in here and dipped these cupcakes into the coffee. It is amazing, but that's just the Italian in me. That's what Italian people do with baked goods <laughs> and coffee. All right, I gotta eat these now. And you know what? I just realized that I actually have, well, my family has this you know, pack of donuts here on the table. Uh, this is back from when we had some guests over and my family bought these. But here's a great comparison of what is actually in the junk food, right? That isn't, you know, natural and I guess a lot healthier is one way to put it, but also way lower in sugar and keto friendly. So with your typical box of donuts, okay? And funny enough, you guys always hear me say that when you do keto, you look at dessert as if it's plastic. Like you just don't have a blood sugar reaction to it. You don't anticipate a rise in blood glucose, so your body doesn't experience that sort of hunger. It takes a few weeks to get to that point, but once you're at it, you know, and you're not tempted by anything. So, like I said, I didn't even notice these were on the table, nor did I notice the other, you know, mini eggs and whatever other desserts we had there for when we had people over. But, essentially, when you look at this, okay, let's go through the ingredients. Okay, we got wheat flour, which is to be expected, right? Water, sugar, that's all to be expected with your donuts, and that's actually not the most problematic ingredients. Glucose, fructose, okay, so that means they're definitely using some fructose in this, which is to be expected, especially with fruity flavored or high sweetness foods, right? Vegetable shortening, here's where we have some big problems because we know that these aren't high quality donuts made with you know, natural, uh, more stable oils, but 
pretty much everything uses vegetable oil nowadays. But this one has like the trifecta. This one has like the, the, the Avengers of hydrogenated oils. The whole squad is out here. Okay, we got palm oil, modified palm oil, canola oil, hydrogenated palm oil, hydrogenated palm kernel oil, hydrogenated coconut oil, and or cottonseed oil. So even if they just use coconut oil, which is a far more stable cooking oil, they have the hydrogenated form, which is very high heat. Uh, dextrose, so very fast absorbing sugar, soy oil, which is problematic and inflammatory for many reasons, yeast, which is probably to be expected from donuts or any bakery goods, modified cornstarch, which is code for MSG. When it's in a product like this, it absolutely means MSG. Corn syrup, so a, a high fructose corn syrup is probably what it is, but I'm guessing on that one, it's already pretty bad enough. Cocoa powder processed with alkali, salt, sodium caseinate, defatted soy flour, more soy. Baking soda, whey powder, monoline diglycerides, wheat, gluten, sodium acid, pyrophosphate, calcium propionate, soy lecithin, sodium, sterile 2, lactate, uh, propylene glycol, which is another chemical. But I mean, it's a lot of foods. I don't even think it's the most problematic of all of these. <clears throat> monoline diglycerides of fatty acids, sodium bicarbonate, skim milk powder, dried whole egg, acetylated tartaric acid, estrogen, monoline diglycerides, color, natural artificial flavor, amylase, enzyme, potassium sorbate, citric acid, glucose, cornstarch. Again, rice flour, <laughs> sodium. Isn't this thing sweet enough? Polysorbate 80, glycerin, caramel color, which is caramel candy, code for artificial color sometimes. Sodium bicarbonate, uh, not always. Uh, xanthan gum, low gum, bean gum, candy cane, uh, carbohydrate, gum, modified cellulose, rice flour, artificial colors, okay, which ones? Sodium bicarbonate, sodium benzoate, polysorbate 60, soy protein isolate, polyglycerol, esters of fatty acids, canned wheat, soy milk, egg sauce. So, that's the first one. Now, we're going to move on to the second one. Now, we're going to move on to the second one. Now, we're going to move on to the don't eat those, okay? And realistically, you've heard me say in my carb backloading videos or other videos on carb inclusion strategies that realistically, it's not the sugar that is the problem in this. A lot of keto people really demonize sugar, but of course you're gonna kick your body out of the ketogenic state and you know you can cause a lot of other problems and food addiction with high amounts of sugar. But when we're talking about a healthy individual who is having a carbohydrate meal, it's not the carbs or the sugar that is the problem. It's just that most of our carb sources, most of our carb foods are full of crap just like this, okay? And it's it's back at a point now where, you know when you were a kid and your parents are like, oh, they don't make them like how they used to. They literally don't for everything. Like if it's a junk food or something, the junk food that our grandparents ate was far cleaner than the junk food we have nowadays because any dairy they used was not fully pasteurized and it was from grass-fed healthy animals, okay? The vet, the oils were not vegetable oils, which are closer to lab chemicals than real fat is what I always say, but it's true. And because they become unstable when you expose them to high amounts of heat, excuse me. And basically, it's not the sugar that's necessarily the problem. It's that there's a whole bunch of other ingredients that are in these products because they are engineered to hit certain parts of your brain so that these companies can compete with other brands when it comes to good baked goods or other foods for that matter. So bottom line, you must be very careful. And even when it comes to including the carbs in your diet, you could have donuts that are made without any of those shitty ingredients. You could have them that are just the sugar, you know, the wheat. And as long as you don't have an inflammatory reaction to wheat, most people do to gluten, but they don't know about it and you get it without the soy and without the hydrogenated oils, then enjoy your donuts and it will still give you the sugar hit that you might want to that particular time. Or if you're following a carb diet at that point, it'll be a better, healthier source of those carbs. So that is the point that really hammers home more of this importance of having these low carb options because the ironic thing is that even though you're cutting out the sugar, which I said isn't necessarily the problem, you end up, because you're making it yourself or you know, going for these other keto friendly foods, they often are devoid of those ingredients that realistically are the whole problem in the carb ingredients in the carb based products in the first place. So that is it for this video, or maybe I'll riff more. I don't know. Is there more left of the video? Check the little bar at the bottom, <laughs> but that's the main point of this segment of the video is that even when it comes to actual carb sources, get them from foods. Even if you're going to have your junk food, have cleaner junk food. That's the point. By the way, this whole time, you know, Number one fan, best friend is over here, Daisy. Yeah, just gotta make an appearance in the video.